it's I not like you they treated you like an alata or something nah okay my father is from a royal home so oh, where really? the chief sense is from that's where he's from okay. so i think once you just call your father's name mm. you know they already know whose child you are you know what lineage you're from mm. it, my father's people i've never really experienced any discrimination from from them at all okay you know, like the Ghanaians. Ghanaians are actually beautiful people they're actually okay. very welcoming people so in fact i remember there was someone who was half white mm. half Ghanaian. that also came for this same depot stuff. Mm. they came from the um i think they came from europe to ghana to perform the right so okay it was actually because we didn't even know the culture it was more like we we're being pampered mm. hello everyone we are back again with another youtube video thank you so much for clicking if you are new here you are highly welcome my name is lily today i have this beautiful lady here a Ghanaian born by a nigerian mother she's a Ghanaian nigerian i mean yeah okay fine let me just leave her to introduce herself please do it to like if you have not subscribed kindly hit the subscription button and turn on the bell for more incredible videos like this one so let's meet my guest hi you're, you're beautiful thank you um, are, am i mm -hmm. mm, i'm period <laughs> welcome to the channel thank you please can can you tell us your name uh let's start with that your name take who Tegosano. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from Somalia. I'm a Krobo girl from Ghana, born by a Nigerian mom. My mom is Igbo and I was born in Nigeria, raised in Lagos by both parents. Sieko, you were born in... Were you born in Ghana or in Nigeria? I was actually born in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, so your mom and dad... My mom and dad met in Nigeria, actually. Okay. I mean, all of that happened before I was born, obviously. Mm. Mom was in nursing school when okay. she said she met my dad. Dad went ahead to pay her bride price, got married to her, and then I was born. I'm the first child out of three children from my parents. I was raised in Lagos, schooled in Lagos, lived most of my life in lagos it was not a case of maybe they had you out of wedlock where oh, no. your dad disappeared oh no no, no no so you grew up with your mom and dad living together as yeah. husband and wife. wife yeah until okay. my father passed on okay your dad passed on yeah. i'm so sorry about that okay. he passed on in nigeria or in ghana in ghana oh. he actually had a stroke back in nigeria oh dear and then his family asked that you know we should bring He's him to Ghana, he, exactly. He bring, yeah. So he ended up passing on here in Ghana. Okay, so the family, his family asked you people to bring him to Ghana. Yeah. Okay. You know, hoping the treatment here yeah. would, be, would be better, you know. Um, it didn't happen the way it was planned. He, he still passed. So your dad eventually passed on and you continued your school in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, how is life as a Nigerian Ghanaian kid born and raised in Nigeria by both parents. How was the reaction of your neighbors towards you? Were there a time you felt like ah, maybe you don't belong here, you belong somewhere living in Nigeria? Like, do they used to do you Ghana? You know, do they used to? Um, for me, mm. I would say there wasn't much, you know, difference. It wasn't like there was any discrimination because my father was Ghanaian. Okay. And all of that. But I, I wasn't raised in a wealthy home. Okay. But we were, you know, average, and we were privileged to an extent. Okay. We went to good school, lived in a good neighborhood. So all of that discrimination, we didn't get to experience it. I didn't, I know like. Yeah, I think that happens more in a. A neighborhood that is um, like yeah. maybe, um, how do I put it? Like, like maybe where they are more illiterate. Exactly, and, like yeah. that kind of neighborhood where they'll be doing you Ghana, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you didn't experience it wasn't all like of that. that. No, no. It was actually, you know, a loving neighborhood. Mm. My mom is Nigerian, so you know, her, fa her family members, Igbos. Mm. It was, in fact, 
I would say we we were more like Nigerians. Okay. It wasn't like they were looking at us like we were any different. Yeah, right? Now, it wasn't up until when, you know, as I'm older now, and I wanted to get married, yeah. and then I was trying to get my national even though i tried before even the whole marriage thing mm. tried to get my national passport and they wouldn't give me they refused nigeria. to give you that in nigeria yeah they wouldn't give me a nigeria what? because of my name so once they see my father named us all Ghanaian names okay we had english names but mm. i was called like just like you call me you so know, that's, that's a Ghanaian name yeah Teko. so um so like when you when you go to get your passport and all of that and they see yeah. the name they'll be like no really you're not you're not you're not one of us now it's either you don't get your papers or your documents mm. or you come back to ghana to get your documents it, that was when i started facing that that's exactly, when you start feeling like that you're discrimination not. exactly like i'm not part of these people you know even though i speak like them even though i you do everything like all them. my life exactly <laughs> like <laughs> I'm still not one of them because they wouldn't give me um, my passport. So I had to, you know, come down to Ghana to get my passport. And that was just easy peasy. So you don't speak... To, do, you speak do you speak the local dialect? No. Now, do you speak like the crop of... <laughs> no, I don't. So when you wanted to get your passport in Ghana, how did you convince them to believe you that you're a Ghanaian? Even though your dad is not here to say, oh, that's my data, I gave her the paper. How did you convince the immigration officers to do this for you? Um, all I had to do was just get my father's documents, so proof and everything was there that he's Ghanaian. Mm. And um, his relationship to me, or his relationship with me as a father. So it was, for me, it I was, was so easy. Less, yeah, because it was easy. It wasn't like, you know, some, some people, they would... Um, suspect them especially yeah. when you're coming from nigeria they would think mm. <clears throat> you want to just because exactly because you just you want, just want the passport you're actually claiming <laughs> to be Ghanaian. yeah uh -huh. i didn't go through that i think they they knew exactly the confidence knew, like exactly. you telling them you know here here you know just like exactly okay i'm going to go back a little bit for the for the sake of so many things because a lot of people are in your shoes and some of them were not as lucky as you uh, in terms of this daddy thing, so some of them are thinking, ah, should I go to Ghana and look for my father? How will his family receive me? Will they receive me? In your case, you had a chance with your dad, like maybe he get to introduce you to his family before he passed away. Mm -hmm. But after he has passed away, when you came to Ghana, did you go home? Yeah, um, home like my home to look for your your family. No, they are actually in Accra here. So okay, majority of them are in Accra. Not really. So this is how it is, right? Okay. My father had my father's father. Oh, so right. my grandfather, Your grandfather. Mm. had maybe two wives. I don't know. Or yeah. Maybe more, I don't know. Yeah, maybe more but African. I, yeah. Exactly. But I got <laughs> to know his siblings from his own mother. Okay. And that's just remaining one. Oh. Like just my uncle left here in Accra. Okay. So he's just one of them. And then his children, my cousins, mm. I have, you know, I know them. We have mm, seemingly good relationship with them. Okay. Even though um, we weren't in touch. You, you didn't grow up together. Yeah, exactly. But, we, you know, they know us. Yeah. We know them. We visited Ghana before, you know, my father passed on. So coming here to Ghana, that... It was that my uncle I went to look for. Yeah. Because that's the person I know. Mm. I don't know the, the others. Rest of his, yeah. Exactly. The his stepsisters, stepbrothers. I really don't know them. So <coughs> nice. When you went, it would be funny for me to say where you were received because I can already guess the answer. But you can't. I can. I'm still gonna ask. How did he receive you? Oh, that was. Yeah. It was a warm reception. Okay. You know, it was like. They hadn't seen us for a very long time. Okay. They were happy to see us. And um, coming this time around, you know, it's, it's been years. Mm, my mm. father passed on. Years later, my only brother passed on. So we've not been in Ghana for a very long time. Oh, so okay. then coming to meet them because I was getting married, mm. it was like, wow, you know, we are all grown now. That's me and my younger sister. We're mm. grown now. It was... 
It was actually a good reception. Yeah, okay. We were received very well. So, now I want to ask you another funny question. Now you move and live in Ghana now, right? With your family. Yeah. You now live in Ghana. Yeah. Do you have any struggle as an... Me, you're more like in Nigeria, like right now, like mm -hmm. you're looking at it like you are like 80% Nigerian because you were born there, mm -hmm. raised there, yeah. and your mother is from there. You've been in Nigeria for quite a while, yeah. and then you moved to Ghana finally to mm -hmm. live here. So how are you, how is the life in Ghana for you? Because mm -hmm. you're like, like me, foreigner. Mm -hmm. Do you face all of that struggle? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, the language? Um, as, you know, here in Ghana, mm. once, once they hear your accent, mm. they already tag you as a Nigerian. Yeah. They don't even want to get to know your name or anything like that. So I remember um, initially when we got to Ghana a few years ago. Okay. And we were trying to rent apartments. Most of the landlords weren't renting to Nigerians. In okay. Fact, once they hear me speak, they're like, we're not renting to Nigerians. But <laughs> maybe, you know, if you're a family woman, mm. we can take you Consider if you're you. responsible, you know, this and that. Until, you know, I have to bring out my documents, I have to bring out my ID, my passport, just to show I am Ghanaian, Ghanaian you know. Um, mm. So it's pretty much the same struggle. To say you are I more relate more yeah. with, uh, no, I actually relate more with Nigerians, <clears throat> Nigerians than Ghanaians. Exactly. That is understood. That yeah. is very, very understandable because you grew up there, you yeah. the culture there, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you speak Igbo? Yeah, to an extent, but right. I understand Igbo very well. Right, you do. But I don't really speak, don't speak. per se because in, in the house, because my both my parents were from different cultures. Yeah, we so they was... spoke English. Right. So we spoke English in the house growing up. So it wasn't like my father was speaking Krobo language, my mom was speaking Igbo. We were speaking English in the house. Mm, all true. All true. Mm. So okay. I speak Yoruba. I think I even speak Yoruba. Yeah, you should more, speak Yoruba. Yeah, more than I speak so you because I grew up in Lagos. Yeah, Dada. Dada. Uh -uh. <laughs> eh, like Yoruba Dada. Uh-uh. Like Yoruba Dada. Yoruba Dada. Eh, hey, no, you get it. The first time you were shaking. I say make So now growing up in um, a household of two different cultures, what were you guys eating? The food in the house? Were you people eating apu or Ghana fufu <laughs> or watch? <laughs> oh, see, I'm very. Yeah, that's how always want to know about this. That's this actually part. an interesting because, yeah, question. Because like, yeah, yeah. Growing up, we mm. ate foods from both cultures, right? So who do they cook in? Your your mom my knows mom how to prepare. Pre no, okay. Actually, no, my mom doesn't know how to prepare any Ghanaian dish okay. at all. Mm. Um, maybe except on rye plantain with cocoyam leaves. She learned how to do that. Okay, so my that father, that was one of my. What's that called? Is it pepesi? Um, pepesi. No, the it's food. called kontomiri. Yeah, kontomiri and the uh, unripe plantain to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. learned how to that. prepare that. But when it came to like eating banku, kenke, mm. in fact, I I enjoyed eating kenke way before I even moved to Ghana. And that was because we were we had some of where we would go and buy okay. kenke yeah. in Lagos. In Lagos, you know how to eat all of these foods. And then of course my mom would prepare her own. So it was a good balance of both um cultural foods so which of these two will you i mean the ghanaian foods or nigerian food which one did you or do you enjoy the most <laughs> honestly it just depends on how it's, it's prepared okay yeah so you like the i both. don't have yeah i'm not one of those that will be like ghanaian food is better than nigerian nigerian mm. food is better i like the both well if right. you like say that i'm still going to ask you about the ghana jello fries <laughs> and nigerian jello you can't escape it it's still the same thing like it just depends on how it's prepared are you serious yeah no but like if you are asked to pick one ghana jello or nigerian jello i'm not going to pick <laughs> So when your when your dad after your dad passed on leaving your mom alone, how was life? Hmm. Would you like to talk about it? Yeah, sure. How um, was life after that? Okay, so my father passed on in two thousand and five, and I was still in secondary school then. Oh, wow! And like I remember just like yesterday. So I was in boarding school. In fact, me and my younger brother, we went to boarding school, except for my younger sister. Okay. So it was like, 
my father was an, an educationist. Oh, really? So he was a he, teacher in Nigeria? He, not what, a teacher, what, but okay. he was like a principal. Oh, obviously. really? Yeah. But he wasn't teaching. But you know, yeah. Yeah, in, in that same field. Yeah. 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 So all of anything that had to do with our education, in fact, from when I was very little, mm. our, our homeworks, it was my father. My mom is a nurse. Yeah, I get that. So she's always busy. Mm. Or she was always busy. Now she's retired, but she was always busy. It was mostly my father with us and then a couple of maids in the house. Yeah. So, but it was mostly, mostly my father. Whenever I came, it had anything to do with education. It was mostly my father. In boarding school, my father would come and visit. I remember when I had my first um, menstrual cycle, mm, mm. it was my father who came oh, to visit. You, you told your, yeah, you told your it dad. It was my father, yeah. So it was my father who came to visit. And, you know, now that he passed on, you can now imagine the struggle, you know, for my mom to start paying attention to all of these things that she didn't even know how to, you know, where, to, where to go to pay our school fee. Exactly. What building to go and pay the school fees, what bank to go to, you know, all of those things. It was like she started learning how to do all of those things. And then, of course, providing for mm -hmm. three children mm -hmm. by herself. She never remarried. She mm -hmm. did all of these things by herself, you know. So. Well, I know your mom and she looks, I know your mom, you know, yes. and he, he looks so young and beautiful. I was like... I mean, uh, I'm so glad you guys made it true and you are here today. So you have been living in Ghana for some time and um, apart from the language barrier and you struggling and trying to always prove yourself mm -hmm. that you're a Ghanaian, do you have any other struggle living in Ghana? I think food stuff in general is way easier to get in Lagos, back in Lagos than here in Ghana, maybe cheaper. Yeah. I think that may have to do with the food. Don't you think that may have to do with the kind of food you eat? Like maybe you are you eat more of the Nigerian food, which is normal because you were raised there. You are you are used to that more than. You're you know. right. You're right. Very mm. true. Because you know when I try to go and get vegetables, mm. try to get um, maybe a goosey, eh. okra, all of these foods that I want to cook in yeah. a Nigerian dish, it's actually higher here. Because they, but, they usually yeah, bring this Yeah, very here. true. But when you want to get condo to prepare banku, it's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. True, true. So you don't, do you, do you how is life living in Ghana generally, like in terms of maybe how you feel in Ghana and how you feel in Nigeria, are they similar? No, it's actually way peaceful in Ghana. Okay. It's actually way peaceful here. Less hustling and bustling here. In Lagos, you are looking for how to go to Please. from A to Stop B. Stop calling Lagos in this and video. You want this video to be hot? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're trying to go from here to here. Yeah. You get to the bus station. Instead of you just go and get into a bus, like no buses to be moving, you are you you're have running to chase after. it. The bus trying to, you know, get to your destination. It's, it's always a struggle in Lagos, everything is just a struggle in Lagos. But here, it's, mm. it's way peaceful, okay? It's way peaceful here, and then, of course, constant power supply okay. that's a good thing. Mm. I like here. Um, do you intend to be in Ghana for good, right? Yeah, and now a lot of people will be asking to know more if you have a YouTube channel and. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. So what do you intend to do channel. there? Honestly, I haven't even figured out okay. what kind of content to create yet. But okay. I know it will be something educative. Maybe more about women, educating women on teenage pregnancies, marriage. Okay. And we'll just see how it goes. Okay. On the depot culture, and I'm sorry to any Krobo person that is actually watching. Mm. I, I didn't grow up in Ghana. Okay. They know that. The little I know about the Depo culture is, you know, um, when a woman has come of age, mm. like adolescent, you know, she starts growing breasts, she's seen her menses, you take her, I think even younger, some of them are even younger. They bring, yeah, okay. if I'm correct, yeah. Because my younger sister was actually way younger okay. than I was when we, when we went for depot. 
um it's more like a ritual formed by the women to to welcome you into the woman who would teach you like marital values so really? it, yeah i heard like in the olden days mm. it's it's a whole they you stay there for a couple of months they start teaching you how to um take care of yourself maybe clean yourself up how to you, you know hygiene how to cook mm. for your husband how to how to cook for your husband wow how to take care of your husband how to be a woman you know just little um stuff like that about woman yeah and all that but in this day and age, you don't really, you don't get to stay for that long. That because long. you yeah. have school it to was go just, to. Exactly. Yeah. It was just like the three days. I think it was around the Easter period when we came for it. And I was still young then. Okay. But I can remember. Wait, your dad brought you to Ghana no. for that? Okay, you guys were already here. My father passed on. Before yeah, we okay, came. before you. So who now told you about the culture? Like, how? It was my father. He wanted us to do it. Oh, but unfortunately, okay. he passed on. So he's, <sighs> he's... So even when he has passed on when it was time for your sister yeah my mom allowed my mom allowed you guys to come to, to come. ghana for yeah, that exactly so because she was like you know your father wanted this so just yeah but when you got it. to krobo when you get when you got to somania so, yeah um ah, god i'm feeling <laughs> so sorry ghost bones like so sorry when you got to somania you guys are coming like who took you there your dad's family members or yeah what? my uncle actually not the same one yeah not the same one and not that one my, that is yeah because my uncle from the one i just talked about his step his, his stepbrother no not his stepbrother actually. okay it was i just call him my uncle but i think it's it's one of their relatives okay you know but i just mentioned he's my uncle okay but then the uncle i know is actually jehovah's witness a jehovah's witness okay so they don't believe in all of those things mm. so it wasn't him that took us oh right then, yeah so it was one of his relatives mm. that took us in fact there were about three of them three of them because there's a part where you get to where a man from your family has to put you on his back you know from the position where you were to it's like you're you're running around and then you come back to that same position where you started from something like that so um he's one of his relatives mm. put me on his back. Another of his relatives put, put my sister on his back. And you know, we were, we were almost naked. It's like, oh, we, we, we didn't they have just anything. Had, no, we, we didn't, didn't have anything. No, we didn't have anything here. Okay. We just had the crowbar beads on right. our chest and then over the little and then beads. Uh. So I, I'll, I'll show you a picture. Maybe once you check the internet for the poor rights, you'll see what it looks they like. Don't, there's, there's something similar like that in South Africa. Uh-huh. Yeah. You heard about it? Yeah. Yeah, very true. Okay. So you would like to educate people more on that on, on that, your channel? Not really. No. <laughs> because I don't know much about it to even speak about it. I was okay. just following the culture, mm. you know, based on what my father wanted. Okay. It's not like I know too much about that. I just know I've done it. Okay, but when, when, okay, but when you guys went for that um, ritual, yeah. mm, you obviously only speak English. Mm -hmm. The people back at home in your hometown mm -hmm. how were they reacting to you guys but well, we had people who spoke english there like some of yeah them i know i know some people speak i know if almost every Ghanaian understands english yes I know. but me like we're they not like ah don't be nigeria eh, we're nigeria eh, we're nigeria no actually no. <laughs> so it's not, it's not think... like you they treated you like an alata or something nah okay my father is from a royal home so oh, we are really? the chief senses from that's where he's from okay. so i think once you just call your father's name mm. you know they already know whose child you are you know what lineage you're from mm. it, my father's people have, i've never really experienced any discrimination from from them at all okay you know, like the Ghanaians. Ghanaians are actually beautiful people they're actually okay. very welcoming people so in fact i remember there was someone who was half white mm. half Ghanaian. that also came for this same depot stuff. Mm. they came from the um i think they came from europe to ghana to perform the right so okay it was actually because we didn't even know the culture it was more like we're being pampered mm. you know 
they were they weren't harsh with us because we didn't know the culture so they, they even appreciate that you came exactly, for that exactly exactly they were trying to take us through because when it came to time to shave off our hair they said in those days they would shave off all their yeah. hair but now they just shave off a little part of the hair you know they were just for us not to be scared yeah they were trying to put us through it and then we had to use um the local sponge we went somewhere to close okay. to the river to base you know with some herbs mm. they were putting us through all of those things and yeah. then they killed an animal put the blood on our Leg i mean it something. was yeah it was like i wasn't scared because okay. you can see these people are trying to just put you through what they are doing so you know they're not trying to harm you or anything mm. like that mm. i think the only part was you know after the whole process was done and they were and they asked if they should make some beads for me for my waist mm. i refused okay. i mean <laughs> had i known i would have just <laughs> accepted accepted it because now you know i'm open to wearing beads on my okay, waist but yeah. then i didn't really know much about then this, it, it about, looks to you like juju no not juju but it was but like you're like ah, what is this it was strange to me yeah because i didn't grow up putting on beads on my waist exactly so that was that was just it but aside um all of that it was fun actually meeting my father's people you know other relatives from my father's mm. side mm. getting to learn more about the culture it was actually fun so nice so before your dad passed on you had a very good relationship with him oh yeah so now why do you think you still come out the way to still get yourself identify as Ghanaian when it, you could actually have just you know be a Nigerian you're a woman mm -hmm. you know so do you think it has to do more with the fact that you had a good relationship with your father mm -hmm. or it has to do more with your inability to get a Nigerian passport or what no it has nothing to do with the passport okay it, it has just right from you know, once you have a good relationship with your father, like, just like you said, mm. you know you're where your father is from. Mm. So I've never seen, I've never told people, even back in Lagos, you know, I've never told people I'm a Nigerian. I okay. tell people you're Ghanaian. I'm Ghanaian. Yeah, but you know, you can ask me for that, and I'll tell you. Yes, my mom is Nigerian. I have, I have an Igbo name. I'm half Igbo, but I'm actually Ghanaian. So I've always identified myself as a Ghanaian. Okay. And now that, that was what made it easier for me to just come here and just, you know, and just blend. Exactly. You are welcome back to your country. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you allow some of us that are foreigners. <laughs> to ask because um back home in nigeria yeah. um you guys may have been going home for christmas do you guys go home to the to the east for christmas with your mom and your dad you don't no okay because i wanted to ask you if at any point your mom's family member okay but they do visit right yeah we've we've actually gone to my mom's village but my my family mm. wasn't that you know the typical family where they take us to visit mm, no we weren't, we, weren't, we weren't like that okay they actually we had m the relatives were actually the ones visiting us more than we went you to were, uh, yeah. that means you people you, like you said you were from the you are from the average mm -hmm. family you know yeah. middle class kind of family exactly mm -hmm. so but when they come visiting at it at any point is there at any point one of your aunties or your uncles or your cousin just kind of like say treat you like you are not nigerian enough no okay Nothing because i'm asking you know all this because i know my little daughter when yeah. we go to my village mm -hmm. they keep making noise like to me i call that noise mm -hmm. they will make sure they call her ama mm -hmm. they know her name is they know her english name mm -hmm. but they will leave that I call okay. her her Ghanaian name. Mm -hmm. Every little opportunity they get, they will mm -hmm. tell her, when are you going back to your country? You know, they are playing, but mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah, understand? I, understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. So I thought maybe you faced that. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. And they call her that and call her her father's name. It hurts me. Hmm. Yeah, they call her. So that kind of make a child to always want to go. You feel like you don't belong here. Yeah. So I thought maybe you guys have, you know, you dealt with that. No, no, no. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, is there something you do right now? What do you do for a living? <coughs> I'm actually an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> she likes business. If you want to do business with her, please feel free. Seriously. I Seriously, I can recommend her for any... Um, I can recommend her for Thank a you. business because I know when we start, you know, we've been talking for how long? Mm. I'll leave you to answer because 
close to two years. Mm, is it up to? I think a year plus yeah. or so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But like when we got talking, talking, I knew you are a good business person. Like you always want to buy, you always want to sell, you always want to. Yeah. Mm, if I don't, if I don't, if you sit with her for long, this is my cloth. She can make it. <laughs> No. Seriously. So, okay, so if you want to do business with her, you're free, okay? Yeah. All right, feel free. She's very good with this business, something. I sell skincare. Okay. I sell baby clothes, baby items. And then I'm also a balloon artist. So, okay. an event planner, event decorator. That, Please yeah. contact her. If you have any business, contact her, okay? You can reach me, I'll reach her for you, all right? <laughs> She's my friend as well. Uh-huh. Even though I'm living in her country, I'm loyal to her. <laughs> so you guys, please do it to follow her on her channel. I want her to come to YouTube because she's brilliant. You can see now. And she's cute. You need to share this beauty with the world, man. Mm-hmm. Don't keep it to yourself, all right? Okay, so ma- you guys, please follow her on YouTube. I'm going to link her channel at the comment section of this video and also leave a link in the description and also for those who want to do business she's business oriented i know what i'm saying you can let me know so please subscribe to her youtube channel and um, follow her all right so thank you so much for watching this video we are coming back to you with another youtube video don't go nowhere all right thank you bye bye